Happy Thursday. Super dope. This is a special episode. I, I wish we had the opportunity to do more live action stuff. Um, but seeing as we just finished up doing Death Note for Patreon as a full series, um, I thought it was only perfect for us to do the Death Note Netflix movie uh, as part of this little soft relaunch. So me and Fed sat down and watched that steaming pile of shit last week. Um, yeah, you're going to hear me um, do a freestyle rap in a moment, um, counting the word shit because they... They weren't afraid to use the F-bombs, man. They were like, hey, we're Netflix exclusive, baby. Uh, drop as many F extra F-bombs in there as possible. And apparently, like, leaked over to me in this episode. So this is, like, an all-time record in terms of F-bombs I drop uh, while recording an episode, I think. Um, I'm not sure if it was uh, the movie influencing me or just if Feds, you know, makes me say the F-word a lot. But whatever. Uh, enjoy Death Note, Netflix. I, I don't know. What's the name of this episode, guys? Netflix, net shits, Death Note, net shits. Nah, it doesn't work. That's rude. I should call it the Netflix Death Note movie or something like that. Um, yeah, that's it. Uh, it's been cool checking in with you guys all week. I uh, love y'all. Thanks for downloading the new stuff. If you're new to the show, I welcome you. I appreciate you. Thanks for finding us. Thanks for listening. That being said, if you're an old listener, hey, we're we're broad in the horizons here, just beyond Dragon Ball. So if you got friends who uh, maybe like The Promise Neverland, maybe like Death Note. Uh, maybe like some of the other stuff that we're going to start covering in the next few months. Share the show with them. That's how we, that's how we grow. Basically, we're a word of mouth show. You know what I'm saying? Friends of friends. We're all friends of friends. All right. I'm done rambling. That's it. I've been waiting all day to ramble this uh, two-minute line to you, and uh, I'm going to have to go back and do some serious edits to it because I just talk so goddamn much. All right. That's it. Love you. Zoom it up. Zoom it up. What the hell is this? You know what it is, bitch. So it up! We're gonna talk about some shit today. And by shit, I mean an actual steaming pile of shit. It's oh, those, yeah. It's one of those days. What a pile of shit. Holy shit, holy shit. Pile of shit. How many times can we say shit in the intro of this thing? A lot. 25? I think we can do At 25? least. That's shit. how many fucks were in the movie, shit, so. Shit, shit, <laughs> I think we're up to 19 shits. Yeah. <laughs> can I fit six more shits in this? Shit. Now five. Four, three, two shit. Three shits. Two left to go. Can I fit shit in this? <laughs> Just one more. <laughs> Here it goes. <laughs> Don't you know? Gonna say shit. That's the last one. Woo! All right. I can't believe it is in a shit freestyle, but it's worthy of today because uh, we watched the Death Note Netflix movie. Good lord. Uh, it's Kyle. I got Feds with me. Um, feds did uh, a good majority of the uh, Death Note podcast that we did for patreon so if you want to check out more of me and feds enjoying like good real death note go check that out at patreon.com slash dragon ball super dope but uh in the interim i feel like it was a really good opportunity to take a dump on this atrocity of a movie yeah um listen the concept of death note the concept the idea of a death note is something that could very easily be adapted and put into whatever fucking little hole you want it to go into. All right. right. Here's where this movie fucked up. They didn't just take the idea of what a Death Note was, what a Death Note does. They tried to take the parts, mm -hmm. characters, elements of Death Note and put them in Seattle. And <laughs> like, that was basically and that's it. That's where the thought stopped. <laughs> That's the movie. They're like, all right, cool. So we got a dude named Light. We know that he's white, so we can't give him the last name Yagami. So Turner, because he turns people over to the light side of the fucking evil justice. For turns oh. the pages in the Death Note. Oh, oh, I don't think I heard the word justice in this movie. Nope, not once. Not once. 
literally the entire or point. maybe maybe once uh, i don't know maybe uh, maybe he says it quick when he's like hey dad our mom got killed by our mom hey dad my mom your <laughs> wife got killed by a criminal and uh that's fucked where's the justice at what the fuck's the justice where is the justice where the fuck it at that might be the only time he said justice uh, can you? I don't know. Can you think no. of any? Um, no. All right. I realize this is going to be a strong comparison, um, but I think it's warranted. Um, this movie missed the mark on what Death Note is as strongly as Dragon Ball Evolution missed the mark on what Dragon Ball is. So much of what makes Death Note interesting isn't the actual fucking notebook itself. Nope. So much of what drives Death Note is the mental chess match between L and Light. In this movie, we have Light, we have L, we have a Misa Amane, but her name is Mia, <laughs> which is fine because adding in the extra consonant of S would have been really fucking dis- distracting. Like, I don't know. I don't know. Whatever, we got a Mia and a Light Turner, and they're like some Bonnie and Clyde motherfuckers. I understand having to take certain liberties with the plot to be able to condense it down to a 90-minute movie in that we don't have a second Death Note, we don't have Rem, we don't have a third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth, ninth Kira at certain points. Mm-hmm. Um, no near. No near. Uh, they actually, you know, the way this movie wraps, L and Light are both still alive, which makes sense because somehow they fucking greenlit this goddamn thing for a sequel. I don't know how. Where the fuck's the justice at? <laughs> Certainly not in this fucking there's some, movie. There's some there's some line in this flick where Light's dad, so, White Soshiro Yagami, was his name? Jake Turner or some shit? Uh, <laughs> I don't even remember what his name was, man. Because <laughs> of shit. Fucking <laughs> White Soshiro Yagami is like, hey, Light, that guy who raped and killed your mom and ruined our lives got impaled by a steak knife last night. Isn't his that, own steak knife. By his own steak knife in the middle of a restaurant. Isn't that dope? That's where the justice is at. No, that's not what he says. He goes, uh, I can't help but think uh, karma's a bitch. Your mama was always right about one thing. Karma's a bitch. Good call. So uh, you would think that the director of this movie would be subjected to that idea that karma's a bitch and not get greenlit for a second. But they got greenlit for a second. Because Netflix is desperate. <sighs> like, I was about to volunteer my services to help Netflix navigate this pile of shit. Like, they've already, like, had the shit plane take off and all the shit planes, you know, flying to its destination at Shitville. And, like, it needs a pilot, an experienced pilot, to be able to take the pieces of the shitty plane and the shit trajectory and the shit fucking airport it's about to land at. Try to soften the shit blow. And help land that shit plane safely into the shit airport. I almost just did something shitty and volunteered myself to do that. And uh, you know what? No, no. If I wrote part two of this movie, I couldn't undo the shittery that is part one. No. I don't think anybody could. No. Where they went wrong was not just taking the concept and idea of Death Note, but was trying to selfishly uh, adapt it with the same characters or iterations of the same characters and say, hey, fuck J-Pan. That's not even that cool. Uh, How about Seattle? That shit's rainy. People live by trains there. Provides a great background for a criminal investigation story. It's it's very gray. It's wicked gray, Just like the moral compass of Light Yagami is very gray. You don't know (laughs) if he's a hero or a villain. That's about his fucking... You know what? No. No. They don't... No. I'm not even going to give him that kind of credit and suggesting that Seattle be the backdrop for this movie in order to coincide with Light being like that that gray fucking Yeah, that's giving them scale. too much credit. Yeah, that's way too much fucking credit. They were just like, Seattle's cool. Yo, we get a tax credit, we in. Like, that's why they shot Seattle. <laughs> Dude. Oh, my fucking God. You know what? They should hire me just to sell the shit show. I can spin the shit real good. I think I just did. That was one shining example. So Netflix executives, if you're listening, this is how you fucking spit shine a shit show. That was a gross sound. 
Yes. I, I thought about spitting, but then I was like, oh, the trash pile is not next to me. It's not a good idea. No, probably not. Yeah, you don't no. want to spit all over your floor and stuff. No. Nah, maybe I just miss a spit on myself. So, uh, yeah, Light Turner is a weird dude, huh? He's yeah. a, uh, quite the social misfit. Um, he apparently is very smart. So smart that, uh, again, in, in the American Light Yagami, instead of being so smart that he just chooses to, um, you know, excel and do well in school and be the number one student as, as Japanese Light Yagami does, Light Turner decides instead to make a couple uh, quick bucks and do all of the fucking homework for all his miscreant fucking classmates because he's an enterprising young businessman thriving in a capitalistic society that is America. Where's the justice? It's Jake Turner and a fucking... Jake Turner. <laughs> no, it's not Jake Turner. What's, <laughs> What's his fucking name? Light? Yeah, who fucking cares? That's how disassociative he is from Light Yagami. Yeah, All right, no. it's Light Yagami versus some fucking dumb kid who lives in Seattle. Some dumb kid who lives in Seattle. Jake was... Turner. <laughs> who is Jake Turner? I don't know. <laughs> I fucking hate Jake Turner. Yeah, he's going to be Jake Turner throughout right. the remainder of this. All right, yeah, his name is not Jake Turner. It's Light Yagami versus Jake Turner. Yep, that's what it is. <laughs> Uh, you should probably Google and see if there's anyone famous yeah, named Jake Turner. Yeah, let's yeah, do that. It's probably a good idea before we fucking besmirch somebody named Jake Turner. Off, really. <laughs> besmirch? Is that the word? I have even... All right, so Light Yagami. A word? Light, the, the real Light Yagami, all right, for the purposes of this conversation going forward, the real Light Yagami will be anime, manga, Japanese Light Yagami from the source materials. Uh, There's no one important named Jake Turner. We're good. I thought there was like a third baseman for the Mets or some shit. It was named Jake Turner. That's Justin Turner. Oh, see, I was pretty close though. <laughs> I was pretty close. Maybe, yeah. you, maybe you got a brother. No. No. Uh, There's Jake Turner, the runner, who's not like he's like some dude from fucking Florida. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> no right. famous. All right. Well, fuck, dude. So he's Jake Turner. Jake Turner versus Light Yagami. <laughs> Light Yagami, again, for the purposes of this conversation going forward, Light Yagami is anime, manga, Japanese, cartoon, Light Yagami. Not this fucking bleach tips, fucking shit pulled to bleach the side, tips. falling asleep on his desk, showing the death note to fucking get pussy left and right kind of fucking Jake Turner shit this kid pulled. This kid ain't Light Yagami. He's dumb. He is dumb as fuck. All right. I understand that. They try to establish him as smart because he's able to sell his brains to be able to do people's homework for 10 bucks a fucking pop so he can go down to the arcade and fucking get a soda and chit-chat with the bitches. But listen, Jake Turner, you'd have been much more well-served had you been the fucking valedictorian of your class and gone on to a prestigious high school or high school, prestigious mm -hmm. college university. And then you get a nice ass degree, hopefully on some kind of scholarship shit. Because again, you a valedictorian, not slumming it for the fucking miscreant cocksuckers in your class who can't do their own goddamn homework. Maybe you get a scholarship. Maybe you get some partial scholarship. Maybe your fucking recently widowed dad would appreciate the financial fucking relief that you'd be giving him by doing well in school and get a fucking scholarship, you fucking piece of garbage. But no, you decide to sit on the bleachers and do other people's homework like a fucking loser. I don't care about your brain. You're a loser. So you sit on the fucking bleachers doing people's homework. And basically, just like in the real anime, okay? The Death Note just drops out the sky. But it's yeah. Seattle, so it's a thunderstorm, and it rains, and it's like real <laughs> blustery real all of a sudden. And everybody acts like, oh, my God, this is the what, what's happening. Oh, it's a storm. Everyone getting sad. Doesn't it rain every motherfucking day Literally there? every day. Like, sometimes all day? Yeah. Y'all motherfuckers Most are this times put off day. by a... F oh. This movie sucks balls. All right, so Jake Turner is a fucking idiot. Yep. Is it not like a... Maybe that's like a name of a cartoon character? What, Timmy Turner. I'm thinking of Timmy Turner from yep. Fairly Odd Parents. Yes. Fuck. Uh, why do I think Jake Turner is a person? I don't know. That was interesting. Yeah, so weirdly... Uh, we just lost power real quick. and Maybe someone flipped a breaker or something. Maybe. Microphones fucking kicked off. I got scared. I thought the Shinigamis were going to come and fucking parish me like I was living in Seattle, Washington. And I was in detention. And I happened to stumble into a random old science Dude, all closet. Gotta, all you got to do is just live there and you'll eventually just, you know. Be fine with the rain and losing power? No. What? 
I'm saying, like, Seattle has, like, one of the highest suicide rates because it rains every day. Really? Yeah, I'm pretty sure. So, are you trying to encourage me? No. I'm not encouraging you. What the fuck was that sound? That's my printer right there. That's my printer. Yeah. Printer coming back to life. <laughs> Jesus Christ. All right. So, anyway, Light Turner. I mean, Jakey Turner is a cunt. <laughs> uh, the real Light Yagami, but kick his ass. Uh, Ryuk has to coax Light into using the Death Note initially. Yeah, instead of just Light peaking his curiosity about it. Yeah, instead of just thinking. All right. So, the thing falls out the sky, and Light waits like a full day to even look at it. And he looks at it in school. In school, in public, in, in detention. detention. What like, a fucking idiot. This Jake Turner could not be any less light Yagami. I So he touches the notebook, he like wanders into some fucking science like storage room or something with a lot of shelves and beakers and breakable shit, obviously. And he sees Ryuk, and what does he do? He gets all fucking scared and knocks over a bunch of shelves like it's a goddamn cartoon. Ironically, the cartoon counterpart to Jake Turner, Light Yagami, Ryuk shows up in his goddamn bedroom in his fucking house. You know what? Know what happens? Light Yagami turns around and says, "Jesus, man, I've been waiting around for you. Where the fuck you been at, <laughs> Shinigami, God of Death? Let's go." Let's- I figured you'd show up at some point, right? Like Yagami is a bad dude, Jake. Turner is a pussy. Is a pussy ass white kid who broke all these fucking beakers in the goddamn science lab. I'm sure he's gonna be liable for it. And if he's not, he fucking should be. Somebody better call his dad. Perhaps the dean. This dean at high school? <laughs> we had a dean at our high school. No, we had a principal. We had a principal. We had a vice principal. There was there was oh the deans. dean of oh yeah deans of discipline. Yeah, there was two of them. That's different. A short Portuguese band named Tony and a butch lesbian woman named Nancy. <laughs> we'll share their last names for uh, an anon- what's the word? Anonymity. I guess, but not really. I mean, you do a little bit of legwork, you can figure out who these people are. If you know who I am, where I live, roughly wh- what year I grad. All right, never mind. I'm not gonna lay out the fucking groundwork on oh, how to man, figure why out these people. Why you do are. that, man? The last names are Texera and Varro. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. I just cut it out for you. Um. Anyway, Light coaxes, uh, Ryuk coaxes Light into using the death note. Bitch ass move. Uh, about six hours later, Ryuk shows up in Light's bedroom and Light seemingly acts like he's never met Ryuk before and he's like, hey, what's up? Uh, I used this thing to kill a bully earlier this afternoon and it was wild. Fuck criminals. I just want to kill me no bullies. So uh, what's going to happen now? And he's like, you found the justice, baby. <laughs> but like, Light in the cartoon. We're just going to call it the cartoon. The anime. His name's Light Yagami. Light Yagami. Versus Jake Turner. <laughs> Light Yagami in the cartoon. He uh he tests it on a criminal first. Why why is Light test why is Jake Turner testing it on a completely innocent person? Cuz he's a fucking white kid. All right. So this is my problem <laughs> with this movie. <laughs> this is a white kid in America. Listen, if you want to take the concept of Death Note all right, what a Death Note is, what it does. Put it in America. You could even attach Ryuk because obviously Ryuk is the keeper of the fucking Death Note and kind of, you know, passes it on in, in this fucking continuity or whatever. Um, Ryuk is essentially the keeper of the Death Note. So if you want to make a live action Death Note movie, first of all, get rid of L, get rid of Light. It's already been done. You're not going to be able to replicate it. You're not going to be able to do it in a way that's believable for the fucking medium of live action versus this anime, this uh, highly dramatized fucking story where you can not only do a lot more just given the medium of animation, but there are scenes where they would never translate well over to live action in the anime that are kind of crucial, you know, to like what the overall story in the arc is. Like, and what comes to mind initially is the dramaticism of, um, the tennis episode, uh, the dramatics of light. I take a potato chip and I fucking eat it. That doesn't work in a live action medium. It barely works in that medium, but it works because it's so over the top dramatized with how simplistic the motion is, but how dramatic the music is in that moment. The juxtaposition of it actually makes it great. That doesn't translate to live action. There's so many moments like that throughout the anime that 
they probably, whoever decided to adapt this, probably should have realized that, you know what, there's too many great moments that we're not going to be able to accurately like represent or like replicate. Let's leave these characters alone. Let's just take the concept of a Death Note. Death Note falls in America. What happens if an American kid fucking gets it? And I think that's kind of where this movie started off. What happens if an American kid gets a Death Note? All right, well, first of all, we got to name him Light Turner. Oh, oh, you do? Yeah, that's that's step two to the concept? No, shouldn't have been step two to the concept. It should have been like, all right, some kid who's vaguely in line with like Light's ideals and morals, the Japanese perspective of those morals versus the American perspective of those morals. That gives you a lot of space to be able to explore the two differences between the cultures if you want to compare this new live action material versus the source material. That in and of itself, I think is very interesting and would probably prompt people who were excited about the idea of a live action Death Note, but they were like, that's interesting. I'd like to see how, oh, they're not going to massacre the characters that I know and love from this anime that's been over for, you know, over a decade at this point. They're not going to massacre Light, L, Soichiro, Masuda, Misamana, and none of those people. Cool. Yeah. No, I want to watch it. What would happen if a Death Note landed with an American kid in today's day and age? Mm-hmm. That's a fucking interesting story. Yeah. And given America's social climate now, imagine if it fell into the hands of somebody who was in line with Light Yagami's fucking perspectives back then and that the, the scales need to be balanced. People need, they need to cut out the middleman and justice needs to be served to these criminals. Imagine serving that to an American kid in 2019 with the hyper fucking sensitive um i mean hypersensitive probably alludes more to like the liberal snowflakes of the world but what i mean is like somebody who is so uh passionate in their convictions and beliefs that fuck man maybe they are semi-radicalized and they do go out and commit fucking crimes or fucking god forbid shoot up a fucking Whatever, a uh, synagogue, all right? For sake of fucking easy um, comparison, Ima- imagine if the Death Note had fallen into America and fallen into the hands of that kind of kid because essentially that's what Lit Yagami does turn out to be is somebody who's that convicted, convicted, that uh, committed to what is utopian society is of getting rid of all these fucking criminals. Uh, take the Jap- But he chooses to do it very... You know, very much uh, shrouded in secrecy. Like, he continues this facade of being this great fucking student, this great athlete. He dates all these girls. He actually works to catch Kira all while being Kira. Meanwhile, Jake Turner can't even fucking, I don't know, not break a bunch of beakers in the science lab and not piss his pants. Like, you know that kid messed himself. Yeah, absolutely. I hope his dad got him a fucking gift card to Cole so he can buy new jeans because he definitely shit. In that pair of jeans Absolutely I guess that's basically My biggest gripe With this movie you, This movie could have been Something different It could have been Something good It could have taken The ideas of Death Note Even utilized The character of Ryuk And if you really Wanted to lean on Some people You could have had L No Maybe not I guess if it were To stay in the same Continuity I guess you could have Some iteration of L Maybe don't call him L but somebody who represents like a be, different letter, mm-hmm. not even different letter, but like you need somebody who plays that role of like we're investigating it. Yeah, you know what I mean. Like, and if it were to fall to America, um, you know, I imagine given the um, what's the word, the self investigative nature of things like police forces, uh, both on the state, local, federal, all on those levels. Um, maybe it's just American fucking cops trying to figure out what the fuck's going on, and then it grows to the FBI, and then, and then it grows the CIA. Be, yeah. yeah, you need some kind of somebody to be able to like be be the one to go against whoever is the current wielder of the Death Note. Um, maybe you don't have it in the same continuity as Light Yagami and L, and that gives you the freedom to bring in an L type character, even if you want to bring in L himself in some iteration. <laughs> And that kind of brings me to one point I wanted to make about this movie. Um, I feel really bad for the dude who played L. Yeah, me too. Uh, you pointed it out. Like, the reverse is true. Because, like, the first scene you see him, he's speaking Japanese to a Japanese watari. And uh, Japanese watari and him are just going back and forth investigating this murder and whatever. And you were like, oh, look. Now White's American and L's Japanese instead of the other way around. And I was like, yo, L's American? 
but pretty sure he was. Yeah, I think you said he was born in New York, and then he goes to the orphanage at Watari somewhere in fucking England, and then he I'll becomes L. Who gives a shit? My point in saying this is, is the dude who played L in this movie, you can tell he came got, from somewhere else. He got cast for that role, and you can tell he was like, yo, shit, I'm going to be L? Black L? Live action L? Cool. Black L. I'm going to fucking get this right. And if you watch the dude who portrays L, especially in his first couple scenes, and again, you don't know the order in which these scenes were shot or whatever, but let's just, you know, for sake of a fun story here, assume that they were uh, filmed in order. Mm-hmm. And those first few scenes, man, he's committed to the role of L. Oh, yeah, absolutely. He's sitting like L. He's got mannerisms like L. He, his eyes move like L at certain points. His tone is matches the american voice actor for l uh it's it's crazy like the the his cadence is so much like the voice actor um for the dub for light yagami so like fuck for l for l so i think this dude came in like real excited trying to make a real cool product and very committed to the idea of being the best l he could be and then he, like, worked on the movie for, like, six weeks, and he was like, wow, wait a minute, what? This dude got impaled by a steak knife, and it bled out everywhere? What? Twelve FBI agents jump off the roof together? Oh, okay, Jake Turner's got frosted tips, and his dad's a widow. Oh, okay, uh, Misa Amane is not named Misa. Her name is Mia. And she's kind of a crazy possessive girlfriend type. And she's the second cure, but like not actually the second cure because there's no second death note, no shit in Gami eyes, no rem, no nothing. Oh, and when she touches the death note, she can't say Ryuk. I think right around that point in time, the dude who was playing Al was like, I don't give a shit. <laughs> <laughs> That's when he started doing scenes like picking up the phone and be like, Are you alive? There's like some scene where he picks up the phone randomly and just calls Jake Turner's dad and is like, Are you still alive? Just checking. And then hangs up the phone. Like, this movie is fucking. This movie is fucking bizarre. It is. Speaking of Misa, I mean, Mia. What the fuck's your last name? Like, Burdit or some shit? Burdit. Barton or some Barton. Barton. Fucking Mia, who gives a fuck? That's what. That's. Yeah, it's Mia. Mia Khalifa. That's a porn star, right? <laughs> yeah. Okay, my bad. It's not that. Uh, it's Mia who gives a fuck, all right? Uh, Yeah, we'll go with who gives a fuck. Mia who gives a fuck. So in this movie, it takes Light about 15 seconds to utilize his ownership of the Death Note in order to further his sexual advances on Mia. Couple problems here. <laughs> One, Light Yagami... That dude don't show his death note to pretty much fucking anybody ever. If you got any idea on how long it took for him to finally communicate to Misa Amane in the anime and manga, you will know that the fact that it took Jake Turner 15 motherfucking seconds to be like, hey, baby, let's go in a secret room so I can show you my special book. <laughs> you motherfuckers <laughs> could not get Light Yagami more wrong, okay? And the second part of it is he shows it to her because he wants to fuck her. I don't blame her. Dude who plays Mia, while I am partial to Misa Amane, the actual blonde supermodel pop star sensation, while I'm much more partial to that iteration of the character, this chick Mia, she's like a hotter Kristen Stewart. I'm down with it. Good for you, girl. I'd fucking go on the Ferris wheel with you all day. I don't want to fuck you so bad that I'm willing to give up like a potential weapon of mass destruction within 15 seconds of you remembering my name. Really? It took 15 <laughs> seconds for Jake Turner to give up the fucking notebook to this chick. If you want to see how the Death Note would play out in a typical teenage romance scenario, that's cool. I, I actually want to see it too. Don't attach the names of Light, Misa, and L to this atrocity of shit in the meantime in order to do that. Do not take Death Note and throw it into the middle of Twilight. And I realize that's probably an unfair comparison and I'm only making that because of the Kristen Stewart Mia thing. 
Don't take it that though. Don't Twilight expect something good to come out of it. What the fuck? Yep. All right, I digress. Let me look at these notes, see what else I got to yell about real quick. Uh, let's see. Takes like 15 seconds to get connected. Uh, convinced to show Mia. Uh, Mia wants to change the world, and Light is a bum. All right, this brings me to Colgan. <laughs> Light is a bum? Yeah. Takes- <laughs> Mia wants to change the world. Light is a bum. <laughs> Light realizes that he's got this power after he kills a fucking bully, and he tells his girlfriend all about it, and he's like, hey, what's up? I'm American Jake Turner, and I got a death note, and I killed a bully the other day. Isn't that dope? Suck my dick. And she's like, no, I don't want to suck your dick. You, what'd you do? You <laughs> killed somebody? How? Explain. And then Jake Turner, very much unlike Light Yagami, is like, here's how I do it. Isn't this I'll cool? show you. Let me show you the book. You want to write some shit down? It? It's cool. It's like a game. Why don't we pop some popcorn and write some names down? That's literally a line in this movie. Yep. Is I thought tonight we could pop some popcorn and like log some name or something like that. Write some names down. Like Jake Turner. That's your name. You're not you're not you're not like Yagami. <laughs> your name's Jake fucking Turner and you got a girlfriend named Mia, and it just so happens that the last owner of this death note was named Light Yagami, and he had a fucking girlfriend that he actually didn't really like at all. Named Misa, who had Shinigami eyes, and your girlfriend was too fucking dumb to get the Shinigami eyes, or even fucking see a goddamn Shinigami, or even find a second Death Note, because we only have the parameters of a 90 minute movie to work within. So fuck you, Jake Turner, you bitch ass bitch. Oh, Light Yagami would kick this dude's ass. <sighs> anyway, <laughs> why is L dressed up like Black Sub Zero? I have no idea, man. Hmm? It's to hide his face, but. If nobody still knows your name, then why doesn't you, matter. Why are you dressed up like Black Sub Zero? You know what? Better question. Why are you out in public so much? Yeah. Why are you out in public so much that you permanently don your Black Sub Zero persona? Now I know what you're thinking. Isn't Black Sub Zero just Noob Cybot? Nah. Not in this case. No, it's not. <laughs> Nah. <laughs> like threatens to kill Ryuk. So apparently you can kill a Shinigami if you write his name in the death note. Yeah, because Ryuk followed it up with like I have four letters in my name and only and the last person only got two down or something like that. Before I disemboweled them bowels. Ryuk was a dickhead in this fucking movie, too. I don't like the fact... He was, he was like, fucking with people and shit. I don't like the fact that they they more or less allude to Ryuk as the person who carries out the deaths throughout this movie. Yeah, that, too. Like, that's a completely different fucking set of circumstances than the death note uh, of J-Pan, where... Ryuk is like the, the, I guess, the keeper or whatever you want to say of the death note. To some extent, he but he's just it. around for the ride. Yeah, exactly. He's just along for the ride. In this one, it's more or less alluded to uh, through our fucking main character, uh, hero, protagonist, Jake Turner. That's the other thing, too. Who the fuck's the hero in this bitch? L? How's it fucking? I, I guess. I guess. But, like, they don't do a good job of establishing who's right and who's wrong either. No. There are points throughout when a Kira supporter will step in and be like, I'm going to knock you out in the fucking face with this board with a nail in it, Black Sub-Zero. <laughs> There's the fucking justice. <laughs> and then Jake Turner is able to run away. <laughs> <laughs> There's lo- the justice. I love the fact that we're so committed to calling this dude Jake Turner. <laughs> oh, yeah. This is great. That's the only way that I'm able to talk about the movie in my mind because I can't think. He's not like Yagami. No, he's not. He's not. His name is Jake fucking Turner. He's got a dag in the police course whose name is fucking Japanese soy chido, <laughs> light American soy chido Yagami. <laughs> light. <laughs> In case you can't tell, all right, for the listener, oh, the last two days, I've had a pinched nerve uh, somewhere in my shoulder, and I haven't been able to turn my head to the left very well, and it hurts to move my arm sometimes. It, it sucks. So I've also been binge editing uh, all of the Death Note stuff to try to have this up for you guys Monday. Let's see if I can do it. I don't know that I can. This will be up at some point but this week, but will it be up before the other Death Note stuff? Who knows? If it is up at the same time as the other Death Note stuff, go to patreon.com slash Dragon Ball Superdope and buy me and Feds' 
Cause like I've been editing up the musical, uh, the Death Note musical shit that we did, and like putting in the segments. Whew. Yeah, that's right, people. There's a Death Note musical out there, and there is a full in depth breakdown that we do, song by song by song. Oh yeah, on this Patreon the special pods. Where is the justice? His name is James Turner. Who the fuck is James Turner? His dad? Yep. Dude, fuck his dad. All right. <laughs> his dad, James, would name his kid Jake. Fuck you, Jake. <laughs> anyway, lots of new rules in this Death Note. I feel like the writers of this movie were like, hey, we can just make up rules as we want in the Death Note, just like they do with an anime at a certain point, even though those new rules are made up and they're not actual rules. So, uh, yeah, we can make up rules too. It's cool. <laughs> yeah, but those made up rules played, played an intricate part in that story. Mm-hmm. <laughs> this one, it's like you could write somebody's name down and basically give them the power of the ultimatum. So if you wield the death note, I could, I have a death note, Feds. I know that your name is Joshua, expletive deleted, expletive deleted. And I say on November 12th, because that's the date they use in the movie, on November 12th, your heart's going to explode. And then I can say, hey, Feds. Hey, Feds. Look at this piece of my death note. Has your name on it. If you don't give me a hundred bucks. <laughs> <laughs> you would kill me over a hundred bucks? What's wrong been, with you, man? I've been poor lately, man. Go to the Patreon page. Buy it. <laughs> Buy this shit. I'm, I'm hurting. So if I don't if I don't get a hundred, if I don't get $70 from you, <laughs> I'm going I'm to fucking make sure this page kills you. And then you're like, no, Kyle. Here's eighty dollars, and I say no. <laughs> no, I want a hundred. And then you give me the extra hundred, and I'm like, all right, cool, thank you. And then I burn the page. You are no longer in in the threat of dying because oh. I burn the page. Lots of fun made up rules in this fucking notebook. Um, also, uh, dealer's choice. They basically. Again, the idea of Ryuk being the person to execute the people who are written down in the notebook. They they leave it up to like, in the, in the anime it's it's if you don't specify, it's just a heart attack. Yep. Jake Turner, being the American hotshot that he is, uh, writes down something to the effect of, or says something to the effect of Ryuk, of, yeah, I'm not gonna get spec- spec- specific. Yeah, specific. I'm not gonna get specific with this. It's dealer's choice. I don't think he wrote down the words dealer's choice. No, he just said it. But to he him. said it. And then later on in the movie, Ryuk's like, <laughs> you said dealer's choice. It's like, no. Default dealer's choice is a fucking heart attack. You, sir, just ruined a completely fucking good Ferris wheel, okay? You killed my girlfriend, Mia, <laughs> and she was a hot-ass piece of ass who was, you know, super down for the cause so much to the point that she robbed my book and, you know, tried to write my name in it unless I did the ultimatum thing that I just briefly described for $80 to feds a moment ago. And then he wrote her name down because he's also a piece of shit. Yep. But then he planned he planned the whole thing out where he's like, "Yeah, well, I decided to utilize the power of prose with the Death Note and said, Mia, not Misa, Amane Barrett, whatever the fuck her name is, dies when she fucking falls off a Ferris wheel, and she hits the shoreline, but her boyfriend don't, and things go well, and a child molester picks up the book, and he drops it off two days later, and then I've got the book again, even though I'm in a coma, and a doctor saved me, and revived me, and all this crap. Everything that I just said, while you may think that it was an incessant fucking ramble, are actually things that happened in the last ten minutes of this movie. Yes. Light describes a very, this is probably the most um, nuanced piece of writing and the most light Yagami fucking thing that happens in this 90 yeah. minute of shit is he plans out things to the very end for the first time at the 90% mark of the film. Yep. As where Light Yagami from episode fucking two of Death Note very much clearly has his path, his grand vision, everything in line. Again, it's Japanese kids versus American kids. That's fine. Name the American kid Jake fucking Turner like you should have. Okay? Okay. Jake Turner, here's the fucking justice. You somehow managed to write an intricate plot of how your girlfriend dies on a Ferris wheel, hits the shoreline. You wrote in this other thing about a pervy-ass criminal doctor who revives you. 
He wrote this other thing in about this pervy ass fucking mailman who literally molests kids, about a dozen kids over a 20 year career to pick it up, carry out your will as care for a few days while you're in medically induced coma that the petter ass doctor put you into. So that way it clears your name there and then the petter ass comes and drops the death note off on your coma induced body. Like, no joke, everybody. That's how this movie seriously wraps up. And then it flashes over to so fucking L, who I think has the death note. You found a page of the death note. Found a page of the death note, because there is the justice. And he's like, what do I do? I'm looking at a picture of Light Yagami and Mia's face right now. I just called him Light Yagami. We know that his name is Jake fucking Turner. I'm looking at a face of... I'm looking at a picture of Jake Turner's stupid fucking frosted hair ass tip face. What do I do? Do I write it down? And I was like, yo, watch this. Light's about to write his own. Fuck. I was about to write his own name down. And then it cuts away. And it's like, here's another rainy song of vaguely about love. The codependency issues in this movie cannot be overstated. Another pretty song about some love, but this one it's got Americans and death notes involved. What is love? Like me just fell off a Ferris wheel. But it's in a medically endorsed coma, you feel. <laughs> Misa Amane, her name is Mia, hit the show now. <laughs> El got a page of the death note. Can we hear a call for death note? Part two, Netflix special. Can we hear a call for this number? To death, no one come we'll hear it. No one can, cause this one was a big pile of shit. Don't you know it? Death, no, death, no, on Netflix. Jake Turner, you are such a cunt. Yeah. I was just possessed by the spirit of a lord, and I overcome with the power of song. <laughs> Where's the justice? It just came through my soul. <laughs> if you need to fucking go back, rewind this shit once more. Where is the justice? I'm done talking about this piece of shit movie. Yeah, fuck this movie. You know what we got to do now? Oh, we got to rate it. Oh, all right. I rate it two balls down. <laughs> two balls down, huh? Yeah. I give it like a negative five stars. My balls should have drop out of my scrote because that's how much my balls hated this movie. Oh, well, that's unfortunate. Negative five? Negative five. That's like Bizarro five. Yeah, sure. Negative five. <laughs> or you could just say Bizarro five. Uh-uh. Five stars and how bad it is. It really does rival Dragon Ball Evolution. Uh, how bad it is? I give it six. Six Pretty out bad. of ten? No, six out of five. <laughs> oh. Oh. <laughs> that makes a little more sense. Well, it's pretty bad. You know what we got to do now, right? What? Where is... I got to do my taxes. The you haven't done your taxes? You know nah. you got like two days, right? Yeah, but I got to edit like 38 podcasts in the meantime. Uh, well, Just you won't get arrested for not finishing podcasts. I might, man. These fucking... These super dope kids, man. They don't... They don't play around. They can wait. If you haven't checked out the the show notes for that Death Note Super Dope, you should because... They're funny. (laughs) So the show notes will be free. Just to like... And basically the show notes will be mostly bullet points of the ridiculous shit that is discussed between episodes or like during the episodes because we we touch on some fun shit. Um... That's the first page, Feds. You 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 flip through and you see if there's any highlights in there. All right. <laughs> Dick Tracy is an asshole. <laughs> <laughs> he is though. Why the fuck's he wearing a yellow jacket? <laughs> Tokyo Doomsday Colts with three hundred plus million dollars. That that's was like, that's that inspi- yeah, that's what inspired Kira. Yeah, man. We we talk history in this bitch too. Yeah. 
Feds tries to read that Japanese. It goes bad. What do demons gamble with? Kittens? <laughs> Whatever, dude. It's just fun. <laughs> Japanese passive aggressive kids. Kicking old ladies into the street. I don't know what that means. <laughs> Kyle kills something. Kyle kills chickens. Ah, Kyle kills chickens. Fucking hate chickens. Tuco clown shoes. Yeah, we named somebody Tuco clown shoes for <laughs> for some reason. I'm not sure why. <laughs> okay. What purgatory feels like a deli? Oh. <laughs> where, you never, where your number never gets called. That's exactly what purgatory <laughs> feels like. Hat face. <laughs> my my new villain. Shit in bags. Shit in bags. <laughs> dude, I do remember that bit, dude. The shit in bags bit is actually pretty funny. <laughs> R.I.P. Dead rat. Dead rats. <laughs> Cure the cat, which is my girlfriend's cat. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it is. <laughs> Kyle hates. Buddy the cat. Something like some to that degree. No, it probably is Buddy the cat. That's, that's Carlton's grandpa's cat that Carlton's mom then inherited, and I hated that cat. Fuck so, that cat. All right, so it's Kyle hates Buddy the cat. Kyle uses his Shinigami eyes in traffic. <laughs> Shinigami eyes. Old man Mike Norm. Kyle bitches about working a job. <laughs> <laughs> Ain't that true? About killing people at the buffet. Killing people at the buffet. <laughs> Feds low key roast Amber. I don't remember that. Oh, it's hilarious. <laughs> Bloody poop pentagrams. That's a serious problem in today's society. <laughs> yeah. Someone needs a neck brace. Do I need a neck brace? I feel like I need a fucking neck brace today. Where's the neck brace? Jesus Christ, man. Right there, huh? What the fuck? What's that? Shh. You can't even read your own writing? What's wrong with you? Stevie Wonder. <laughs> Stevie Wonder needs a neck brace. <laughs> Wow. That's terrible. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Stevie Wonder needs a neck brace. <laughs> Here's a good one. White sticks a dick in Ray Pember's ear. <laughs> 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 Moving on. America the Beautiful. Bronxton Mass makes a, a bad TV show. A really bad TV show. Ted Turner loves Darkwing Duck. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I gave him the last name Turner, I bet. Because of Ted Turner, that fuck. Fuck you, TBS. Fuck you, Jake Turner. Scott Stapp offered... Scott Stapp of Creed Meds approved. Oh. I guess. Okay. Mr. Dink. Hot. <laughs> Douglas. Very expensive. Douglas. I read it really quick and I thought I said golden shower, but it's golden stairway. <laughs> Death news in the sky. I can't even read that, but it looks like it could be something good. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's duty cans and finger pangs. <laughs> That's the episode where they decide to. Oh, that's right. Ah, oh, when when Soichiro was like, "Yeah, you can put cameras in my house." It's like, "Yo, your daughter might be pooping in there." Duty cans and finger bangs. Freestyle slam poetry recap. <laughs> Amber is the dog whisperer. It's true. Amber Milan. 
uh, Duel of the Fates potato chips. <laughs> potato chip. So, Kyle, something in the shower. Or something in the shower. I probably shit in there, yep. Maybe. <laughs> Someone threw up in the shower. Oh, yep, that was Crystal. Kyle cleans the shower, that's what it was. Yeah, Kyle cleaned the shower because somebody threw up in it, yep. So like the the Death Note podcast is it's it's recorded from the time of January through March. Like it's a very weird time uh for the show in general just because like I'm in the middle of moving out of the old studio room into the new studio room. So you get to hear a lot of the inside uh stories as to some of the things that led to that happening and then some of the fun shit that happens uh when I first move into the studio room here where I actually live including Clean, cleaning puke out of my shower What do you got? Alright, so now we're on to uh, episode 9 Which was our shortest episode at 17 minutes Because you fucking wrote it gigantic and circled it Yep, no, episode 9 and episode 13 are problem episodes You're going to help me fix episode 13 Okay Yep So uh, we got, for episode 9 we got No shoe, no shirt, no shoes, no service, L. <laughs> Put some fucking shoes on. <laughs> and we got shoeless Justin Bieber. <laughs> <laughs> Going John McEnroe on Elle's ass. Blake versus L tennis style. Tennis style. Kyle is good at tennis and equestrian. <laughs> No, not Kyle is. Japanese people are good at tennis and and No, it says Kyle is good at tennis and an equestrian. <laughs> That's a lie. All right, it's basically just a big segue into how I found a lot of Japanese video games to be either in the tennis or equestrian vein. Oh, okay. And for, specifically from the mid the early to mid 90s. Super Famicom Japanese businessman game. Yep. No, that's great. Me and yep. Feds just wanted to throw some telephones at people, but we couldn't. Nope, we couldn't. And I'm still very sad about that to this I day. I have the game if you ever want to try it again. No, I'm good. It's here. No, no. No. All right. <laughs> Kyle jams to J-pop songs and talks about video games more. Yep, that sounds like me. Uh, Let's see. So Ichiro has a heart attack. So don't we all. Late asks to get locked up. Kyle's down with OPP and bitches about Chinese delivery. I like how that one rhymes. Not gonna lie. Kyle and Fed's running out the clock. <laughs> yeah, I think we just mailed it in for one. Yeah. <laughs> Carlton makes a guest appearance, vintage video games, singing Maximum Carnage. <laughs> And there it is again, in case you didn't hear it the first time. Drop the hat, baby. So Ichiro steals an ambulance. Like Mis a badass. <laughs> Misumani appears. Happy Gilmore and jokes ensue. True. Well, the Misumisa lady, I think I just killed her. Ah. All right. Kyle complains about all the shit he has to do, but possibly ultimately won't do. Ice cream. <laughs> <laughs> That really is the flow of the notes, too. Yeah. <laughs> Kyle complains about all the shit he has to do and possibly won't do. Ice cream. <laughs> Actually, it's all in caps, so ice cream! <laughs> like to know it all, dickhead. <laughs> yep. Rem and Jealous love and their love for Misa. Uh, Shinigami life expectancies. Kyle reviews the pilot episode of the drunk... Jimmy and Brian podcast. Oh my God. All right. I'm glad that you fucking hit that one. If you haven't heard uh, the Dragon Ball Super Dope, uh, excuse me, OG uh, DB Super Dope episodes on Patreon uh, as of next week or this week, I, I don't know when you're hearing this, whatever, uh, they'll be free. So there is a series of episodes on there where Jimmy and Brian decided to get drunk at 8.30 in the morning and wander into the studio room right before I moved and we recorded several episodes of them just bombed and watching Dragon Ball with me and it was fun and uh, apparently it inspired Ryan to go home and try to make his own podcast and he sent it to me to be like hey man this is me and Jimmy riffing and then we we listen <laughs> <laughs> we listen to that sound and uh 
you know, I break it down from like podcast consultant perspective for sure. But I also break it down from like, wow, you fucking dope ass idiots that I've known since I was 12 <laughs> years old are uh, dumb as fuck. eh? And then it gets to the end of it. And, and Brian just goes, how long was that? And he checks his phone. He picks it up. And he's like, what was that? Like 10 minutes. And he picks up his phone. He's like, it was only three minutes. Oh, my God. You want a fucking reveal? Go for it. Uh, we got uh, Light Yagami is the best wingman. He is, dude. He fucking hooks up his cousins real fast. Yep. Kyle hates on dogs. I do. Uh, Kyle turns Canadian. What was that all about? Uh, Rem is a lesbian Shinigami. It's true. Shinigami years. L's and lights, natural life and life expectancy. That's an actual discussion that we have that is not a joke. <laughs> Misa gets kidnapped a lot, apparently, for being too hot. I guess. Yeah, that makes sense. Alternate reality equals shrinks dicks. <laughs> yeah, basically, I, we talk about a reality where uh, the death note doesn't <laughs> kill people, it just shrinks their dicks. <laughs> so what about woman? Uh, women can't be written in the death nah, note. Nah, women are women are immune. <laughs> How fast do you think the death note crisis gets solved when the Americans start having their dicks sh- shrunken? Pretty pretty quick. I hope so. <laughs> I, don't, I don't want my dick to be shrunk. Anyways, Kyle fails to remember the something family. That makes sense. I forget my family all the time. The Partridge family. Oh, yeah, no, it was the Partridge family. I forget them, <laughs> I too, to really sometimes. I really close at that one. That's Partridge. I forgot who David Cassidy belonged to. I just thought he was his own man, and then I was like, nah, he belonged nah. to a greater family unit for sure. Yeah, that was the Partridge family. Word. Is Amber and Mike guilted into having kids? Yep. Not by me. By Mike's scary-ass mom. Masturbating while handcuffed to your buddy? <laughs> it ain't no fucking thing, man. Uh, Matsuda is fucking annoying. Yep. Amber Milan dog training moment. <laughs> she gives them a lot throughout the series. If you're really curious as to how to best prep your dog, especially if you got a younger dog whose like behaviors are still kind of moldable, you will want to download the Death Note Super Doe. Amber Milan makes several appearances to WoW. Aizawa says, fuck pants. Mm-hmm. Dating in 2007 versus dating in 2019. Yep. Kira Task Force sticks around. Everyone quits. Heisman quits to go cry in the park. <laughs> he does, though. I know. Uh, charming the dick off a it says horse. horse. Yeah, charming the dick off a horse. Okay. Basically, yeah. what that entails, what that's like, the benefits, the pros, the cons. Amber gets a C- in the Death Note pop quiz. Because she fucked up. Yeah, and you know what, dude? I think I think we're good. You know, you guys probably you've probably heard Amber on a few of the the super note, super note, super death, super super death, super dope, super dope, super dope. That's the name of the show. Um, you probably heard Amber on some super dopes. Amber is a big part of what we do on the death on super dope. Um, she is pretty much uh, she's number two. Fat G three, Amber's number yeah. two. She's got like number two in terms of appearances and all. Oh yeah, I know. Um. She knows and loves and cares about Death Note so much, but the ability to retain people's names, mm, not so much. <laughs> well, you just gave you just put up like pictures. No, basically, I was just like, "All right, go ahead, name me as many people from Death Note as you can." And I think she got to like six or seven, and I was like, even that sixth and seventh one, I was like, "All right, I'll give you that one because the pronunciation was close, but still fairly off, like shit like that." Uh, C minus. She's lucky she didn't get an F plus. Cleric. I can uh, name more than six. Yeah, go ahead. What's all right? Go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, I can name. I can definitely name. I more mean, than you six. definitely just read my notes for a while, and no. that's fine. I mean, I knew you could have done it either way, but like, go ahead. This is your Death Note pop quiz. This is how we'll end out the show and go. Uh, let's see. We got uh, L. We have Light. We have. Do you want? Do you want first and last names? I prefer it. Well, I don't know what. No, the, it's fine. You know what? Because like the, the cops and stuff. Yeah, what's Matsuda's first name? Nobody knows that. No, exactly. Uh, so we got Matsuda. We got Aizawa. We have uh, Ukita. We have Ide. We have uh, 
<clears throat> so each of Yagami. We have Sayu Yagami. I don't know Light's mom's name. Mama Yagami. Mama Yagami, no. <laughs> uh, we have Iber. We have Weddy. We have... We have Giovanni. <laughs> Giovanni. We have Nier. I have not have gotten to the episodes. Mello. I have not gotten to the episodes where we start doing the Giovanni <laughs> shit yet. But when I, I... That first episode, we have the dispute about how to pronounce Giovanni versus yeah. Giovanni is... Yep. I, I know that it's it's so we funny. have uh Taru Mikami, we have uh Damn. Yeah, we have uh uh Demigawa, the fucking Sakura T V guy. Oh shit. All yeah. right, that's a good reach. I didn't fucking know his name offhand. Uh well let's see, we have Who else? I got you at sixteen right now, I think. If you can name four more, bro, you got an A plus. All right. Let's see. We we got Oh, we got uh, Mochi. Yep. We have... Uh, you can name his counter alias. Or Mo his... Mogi is his yep. real name. All right, I'll give it to you. <laughs> and then uh, we have... Uh, duh, duh, who's the fucking news anchor bitch? <laughs> Taru Mikami. You already said her no, name. No, that Mikami is oh, the... Oh, Mikami's uh, the fucking the, the, the last Kira. The hand of Kira. Yeah, what about Kira the turd? Huh? Kira the turd? The dude from Yotsuba. <laughs> Oh yeah, Higuchi. Hey, yeah, Higuchi. Hey, <laughs> Higuchi. Hey, Actually, one of my notes in that book mm -hmm. is literally just a bullet point that says Higuchi hey, with like five eyes at the end of it. Uh, how could I forget Watari? <laughs> oh my gosh! How could I forget? That's twenty, baby. That's eight plus. So I'm that's how gone. you know, everybody. The person, the peoples who broke down this abortion of a live action death note netflix movie know their shit we we just got finished watching this fucking series like the other day we did the musical like two or three weeks ago i've uh, been watching it with, with danielle too oh she you guys are re-watching it right now yeah what i what are, we just got to the near so oh how's she digging she like no she likes it but it's like she's, it, she's but like, like how she, oh like how she, she take the death of l she's not like it how could you no not only could you know, I mean, I can understand the death of L being she what was it like, was. like, I'm really sad that L is dead right but now. But the way in which you make up for L in the second half of that series, again, this, and you can, again, you can hear us talk about it more in depth, but the pacing of the fucking last third, or I guess it's actually half, L dies at or around what, 26? L? Yeah, no, that would be, yeah, that would be the last third. The last third of Death Note, yeah. with L and Mello being the two counterparts who are supposed to make up the whole part of, of L. Not only is the pacing fucking atrocious, but the character development there or lack thereof, and you're just supposed to fucking like accept what Mello and Nier do. Mello is is very much a plot device in how whenever you can't explain something logically, it's because Mello did something off scene that Nier will now explain to you. Right. Nier in and of himself is a fucking boring ass character to me. He's all the fucking like the cool. He he's like all the less interesting parts of L in that. He's very confident. He's very smart. L in and of himself is actually kind of quirky, but like more in like social ways. Nier's quirkiness only uh, revolves around his traits of he's constantly stacking things, he's right. making fucking dominoes and stacking fucking little Lego figures. Well, and, and from a logical standpoint too. Yeah, obviously the mentality and the intellect part of it is, right. is the obvious tie, but that's not the thing that made L interesting. The, no, the intellect was necessary to make L a, a viable character. It's not what made him interesting. What made him interesting was not only the back and forth dynamic that he has with Light in this fucking weird social dynamic where like they have to work together but he also suspects them and l excuse me light knows that l suspects him fully the entire time that whole weird like scene behind the scene going on is mind-blowing and that's what makes death note what it is like that's what right. makes it so compelling that's what this netflix fucking movie failed to do they missed the mark completely oh my that. god they did not understand what made death note cool no nah. at fucking all it's not the notebook, man. If you want to shoehorn in a fucking American love story, okay, that's fine. Don't try to take these characters and Americanize them and say this is the American version of them or whatever to try to justify what you've done to the story. Like, the story suffered as a result of the way in which you people chose to reset it. And the idea that you got a second movie to make off of that first one makes me want to throw up because I've never made 
any kind of film in my life, and I feel like I could fucking work on a better. I I feel like I could contribute to making a better project than you people do. Did oh my god, don't. Fuck you guys who made the Netflix Death Note movie. And that's where I'm going to leave it. Fez, you have any final thoughts? Uh, No, this movie was a giant sack of shit, as we have said throughout the course of this podcast, pretty much. Uh, so, uh, But you want to know what sucks about a sack of shit, man? What? Can't flush it down the toilet. No, nah, man. Because it's so big. You can't ignore it. Death Note is one of the most profitable intellectual properties on the face of the earth. Yep. Fuck just Animex uh, exclusively. It is one of the most profitable intellectual properties ever. Um, is, there's a reason why there's so many different iterations of it, despite the source material being only, I think it's what, 108 chapters for the manga, 37 episodes for the anime. Mm-hmm. There's a reason why there's so many different iterations, so many different languages. There's a reason why they have audio dramas of this thing in fucking many different languages, uh, live musicals, um, you know, live action movies like this abortion, Japanese live action movies. Death Note is a pivotal piece to. Uh, anime culture uh it wasn't super inventive in the psychological thriller aspect part of you know the anime genre like it didn't invent it but it definitely capitalized on those vi- uh those plot devices and uh made use of them in an extraordinary way uh death note is uh one of the best animes of all time i think it's safe to say and uh this netflix movie the service like take the concept make it americanized make new characters don't fucking force jake turner down my butt you know what i'm saying or up my butt i don't like jake turner in my butt yeah man get out of my butt jake turner get out of there super dope i don't know if we end the show yet so i think i might end it with but that doesn't feel right because we didn't just spend the last hour talking about Dragon Ball. No. So you know what I'm gonna do? What? I'm gonna end it the same way that we ended the uh the Death Note podcast on Patreon. Oh, cool. Sakawino! Turn it, turn it, turn it.